good wine starts with good grapes. You can purchase your grapes or grow your own as we do just north of San Francisco in the Bay Area. What you're looking for is good color, good sugar, good acid, and ultimately good taste. This is the first test in the vineyard, which is a refractometer, which determines the amount of sugar in your grape. We're looking for a target area of say 24 to 26 degrees bricks, which translates times 0.55 to your potential alcohol. So this test, along with the taste and some other indicators, including the color of the seeds and the crunchiness, determines whether or not your grapes are ready. Looks to me like it's time to harvest. This is the crusher to stemmer. The crusher to stemmer separates the stems from the grape pulp and the skins. It's a simple mechanized device that is just time proven and saves a lot of hand labor. Add the grapes to the top, crank the wheel, grapes come out into one bin, and in a separate bin, you'll see the stems. What you're looking for is this product which is ready to go. Now it's time to pitch the yeast. Select a yeast that's appropriate for your grape varietal. Start by hydrating the yeast in warm water, a little bit of sugar. Let it set for about 10 minutes until it becomes active and pour it into your tank. Mix it in well. This is the beginning of primary fermentation. Once you've pitched the yeast and fermentation has begun, we cover our tanks with an electric blanket to maintain proper temperature. The optimal temperature for full-bodied reds is somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees. When fermentation really gets going, the CO2 that's produced is going to push the grape and the grape skins and pulp up to the top of the tank. This top is called the cap. Now it's time to punch the cap which essentially pushes the pulp and skins down into the liquid to maximize extraction of color and flavor. You'll do this two times to four times a day for the next six to ten days depending upon how long your fermentation goes. This is a very important phase. This is where you're really making the wine and really extracting the maximum color and flavor from your grape. During primary fermentation, you want to monitor the temperature. 80 to 90 is optimal. And after several days, you pull off the lid and begin to punch the cap, and you can see just this gorgeous extraction occurring from your primary fermentation. Once primary fermentation is complete, it's time to press. We use an old-fashioned basket press. Assemble it outside. You can buy one, rent one, or borrow one. Assemble the press and transfer the wine from the tank to the press. Nothing high tech. Fill the press to its top. Put on the press blocks. Lower the press head onto the top. Insert the lever and begin cranking. This is your first opportunity to taste your wine. You press your must until it's to its full extent, until it's dry. The product 
when you disassemble the press is what's known as a pomace cake. This cake can be saved and heated in a temperature controlled apparatus to produce grappa or it can be disassembled and used for compost. The pressed wine goes into a variable volume tank, a little bit of potassium metabisulfite. Insert the lid and pressurize the seal your young wine is on its way. The backbone of every good winemaking operation is a good sanitary line. You'll want to maintain a basic laboratory with scale and devices to precisely measure out additions of sulfur and the concentrations of your cleaning agents. After two months in the tank, it's time to revisit your wine. Measure out 20 parts per million potassium metabisulfite for addition to the wine tank once you open it. Open your tank, add the 20 parts per million potassium metabisulfite. Prepare the receiving tank and it's time to do what we call racking. That is transferring the liquid off the solids. It's a good time to taste and evaluate how your wine's coming along. And as you can see, this is what's left in the giving tank. This tank goes through a sanitation line, chlorinated trisodium phosphate with a water rinse, a dilute citric acid with a water rinse and then a final, everything final, gets a small concentrated potassium metabisulfite dip just to assure a good sanitation. Fill your new tank, replace the lid, pressurize and you're ready to go. Midway through the fermentation, we open the tanks to taste the wine and evaluate its progress. With most varietals, we like to add toasted oak staves. These staves add a hint of vanilla, caramel, and coconut to the finished product. We leave them in the tank for the next one to two months and evaluate at blending. It's springtime now and your wines have been in the tank for four to six months at least, it's time to taste. Pull a sample of each one of the varietals, put it in a pitcher, set up a table, and invite some friends over to sit down, taste a sample, and evaluate. Color, balance, flavor, acid, you name it. Each one of these varietals has a unique flavor. The question, to be addressed by your friends and family is how does it taste? How do each one of these taste? Could any one of them be improved by combining a little bit of one into the other to improve the flavor, character, or the color? After tasting, pour measured sample of the proposed blend and let your friends and family evaluate it. Once your friends and families taste and agree on the blend, it's time to actually do that blending. Transfer the wine in those proportions to a receiving tank in whatever combination works for you. This wine will be transferred to a tank and let set for another two to three months until it's time to bottle. Bottling begins by sanitizing 
the bottle with potassium metabisulfite, placing the racking cane into your tank, filling, corking, Capping by placing a cap on the top and inserting it into a heat tunnel. Label and let it rest for one to two years before drinking.